with approaching 1400 and my goal is to teach you how to pass this level and target ones. So let's start with the game. And here we go guys. If you don't know me, I'm rated 2100 on chess.com and I'm teaching you how to get better. So my opponent played this move, which is quite unusual, I have to say. So what can I play? Let's stick with d5 this time because, yeah, we could dispose, although it's going to fianchetto or his bishop. So even though I'm playing with black and uh, every time I'm, I'm much more solid with black, although if my opponent is going to give me all this space, I'm going to take it. Why? Because now I have already an advantage because I have a lot of space, I'm controlling these important squares, I'm controlling the center and I can develop my pieces pretty much wherever they want, so this is my advantage. I'm going to develop the, the square bishop for a simple reason. He defends the pawn and after I develop this knight I can, uh, I can castle short as soon as possible, so that's my plan. Develop the knight to defend this pawn and then castle short and life is good. You see, this is pretty simple at uh, this level. If you want to beat everyone, you just have to develop, uh, develop every piece you have, castle short and uh, you win. It's not uh, the tide because uh, as you see, I'm just playing logically and just taking control of uh, the center is nothing too hard to do. Now, uh, I can choose between a lot of things. Uh, probably bishop on e6 is quite a good move. I don't want to play bishop on f5 for the simple reason that I'm going to give him uh, e4 with tempo, which uh, doesn't make any sense. So the bishop on uh, f5 doesn't do a lot, as you see there is a pawn chain. The bishop on e6, despite the fact that it doesn't also do a lot, at least it is going to defend this pawn and I mean, in the future is a thing I could use uh, in my advantage. Also, I could develop the knight, but at this point I really like to have uh, the, po uh, the pawns in the center. Why? Because if you have the pawns, you are sure you are going to push something and the position is not going to close. If I have two pawns, let's say I push it forward, it blocks it. but if I have the C5 pawn, I can't block it because I'm going to open the position. So for this reason, I want to have the pawns in the center to open things up. And why do I want to, know, uh, to open things? Because I castled, his king is uh, in the center, and if he has a king in the center, it's common sense to attack it and win. So for this reason, the coni 8 does indeed make a lot of sense. But before developing major pieces, I think it's also important and more important to develop minor pieces. So I'm going to play knight on c6 and I'm going to start an attack only when I developed all of my minor pieces. Because after that, my attack is going to be huge. It's going to be really strong. So let's also develop the bishop on e6. This pawn are completely defended. And now I can think about uh, a pawn break. Now I have to be careful though, because if I play d4 at this point, it can actually block the position because I don't have c4. If I play c4 now, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm losing material. So what if I play e4? Take, take, I'm still going to lose material. So before doing that, I could prepare the push. So maybe I want, uh, I am willing in the future to lose material, but at the cost of a pawn, I have a really strong attack. So in order to do that, I need to develop the queen and, and the rooks because at the point I have all the pieces developed and I'm sure that the attack is going to be really strong. Where do I want to put the queen? On c7 or on e7? Not so sure about that. If I have to be honest. Hmm. I'm going to put the queen on e7 because there is a king on the same file and I put pressure on the a pawn. And after this move, I'm going to develop the rooks. 
Why do con e8 because that is a king? And why do at this point I could actually put on c8? Why? Because there, there is a king on c8 now, which makes a lot of sense. Look on c8, I have developed all the pieces and I can finally push and win. If I push this pawn, it's good that it's going to take somehow. Although I'm going to take this pawn, which is crucial. If I take this pawn, his, his position just fall apart because his king is so, so weak. And I'm going to give another tip, which is really important. If you're playing rapid, you don't need to uh, play so fast. He's playing too fast. He has 9 minutes. I mean, it's true that I'm talking. Usually I play much faster, but he's really play, playing too fast. 9 minutes and we are at move 13. We are in the middle game and I think he's completely lost. So you should think a bit more. I'm going to take this because now the king is quite weak. This pawn is not under a huge attack now. And I don't know. Yeah, I could take or put the queen in a better position, which uh, makes sense in my opinion. And after that, uh, we will see. Open the position obviously is a good thing for me. But before doing that, I wanted to have a strong piece there because um, I'm really close to the king. I can start pushing the A pawn, for example. So also I'm I'm provoking this, which is a weaknesses. So I'm I'm happy about that. I'm quite happy that he played this move. I still want to keep uh, the queen on this file on the B file because the this pawn is pinned. So yeah. I'm going to play queen on b6 and at this point this pawn is under a lot of pressure pushing this pawn makes sense mm, what can I do also these make a lot of sense actually knight on um, a5 is a really good move I think yeah because now there is all the pressure possible on this pawn and I'm threatening maybe in the future to take this pawn. Now he's defended by the knight, but let's say he take this pawn, I'm going to take this. Yeah, I saw this. I'm going to take this pawn and there isn't a, a good way to defend it. Because if you play something like this, I'm just going to take with the bishop and he can't take with the pawn. He has to take uh, with the knight. After that, I have to say that I, I just win a piece, but uh, I could even take this pawn. Uh, if I take this pawn, I also win a piece though, because the knight is not defended. So I win this pawn and I take the knight with my knight, probably because uh, I have better nasty things. So my point was. Yeah, it's good that I'm going to lose a pawn, but at that point, your pawn on big D is really weak and it's more important to weaken the, the pawn that is going to defend the king that to lose a pawn that is not actually defending something. Now, he played this, so I'm even thinking that taking with the rook is better because I'm just threatening this pawn, threatening this where with, with the rook, if I take with, with the rook, it's a checkmate that. So let's say I take the knight, he's going to take with the rook, but I take. So he probably has to defend with the queen or he moves his king this way and then I'm going to win the queen. So. Yeah, attacking with the rook is tricky and also a really good move, I think. Although even taking with the knight wasn't bad at all. But I feel like that is more forcing. If you're up material, it's um, quite a good thing to play forcing moves. Because if you are going to force a raid, the more pieces you trade, the better chances, the higher chance to win you have, obviously, if you are up in material. For this reason, I'm not even going to take the rook back. I'm going to double rooks. And now, I mean, he's uh, in a lot of double, like quite a lot of double. 
I mean, trading is good, yeah, but instead of doing that, I, I could have, oh, I, I could have traded everything, like uh, the rook and, uh, and the queen, but at this point, I'm making so much pressure that he's going to be checkmated or he has to suck a lot of uh, material, so, I mean, trading is good, but if you see a better move, obviously, you, you should play it. Yeah, now this is pretty much resignable. But all the problems started because... Yeah, he played... What is this? So, let's check the analysis. I thought I played better than that accuracy, but... I don't know. What I, I missed. So now, obviously, taking as much space as possible is a really good thing. So, starting with a reason why he lost this game. A small reason is for the opening. It's true that the opening is not such important. Although, as I always say, you can play whatever opening you want if it's not really bad. This is not so bad, I mean it's playable, but giving all the center to your opponent and getting attacked by your opponent is not a clever thing. You could do something better, you could choose an opening, whatever opening that at least give you a bit of space. This is not good. Uh, this was a logical move because I want to castle short as soon as possible, so nothing wrong with that. And now, yeah, I can play c5, have a lot of space. Uh, black is, is slightly better, although I would say that for white is really hard to defend such a position. And again, if you are white, you shouldn't give black all of these uh, attacking chances. You are the one that uh, is supposed to attack, and attacking is a really good thing. Uh, that's the way to get an advantage. You can get an advantage by defending, although you have to be really good. If you are 1300, but I would also say at my level is, is uh, much better to attack. It's true that sometimes people play really wild things, uh, really passive things, and sometimes they win, but usually you're going to lose. This is a weakness. Um, if you're going to castle long, uh, it's going to be pretty bad for you, as uh, in fact it, it happened in the, in the game. So yeah, computer is saying it's good, this move is good, but I would say it's more often an inaccuracy. I wouldn't really suggest to play this move. In this position you need to develop pieces, you don't need to push this pawn, that's just a useless move. A bad move for you because it just give me weaknesses. A weakness. And you should play knight on f3, honestly, and castle short and pray that I'm not going to destroy you. I think this is the best move, yeah. Obviously, you want to develop pieces as soon as possible. This is a good move because I want to develop all my pieces before starting an attack. It's just a logical thing. And if you understand the concept, it's a pretty easy thing. You're going to gain hundreds of points because of that. This is how you play an opening. You take as much space as possible if your opponent is going to give you. And you develop all your pieces, minor pieces before the major pieces. You connect the rooks and then you start an attack. So you just need to be patient. Um, you have to understand that uh, when you are going to get better, you're not going to win a game in 10 moves. A blue chess game is going to be won in the end game. And honestly, most of uh, my games I won, I wouldn't say in the end game, but um, last part of uh, a, a middle game. So this is just to say that you don't need and you want to win a game in a couple of moves. So instead of attacking in the first three, four moves, just develop pieces and you're going to win uh, in the long run. You're not going to win in two seconds, but uh, that's how it, it works. 
if uh, you face an opponent that can play obviously you are not going to win in two moves so develop pieces before starting an attack just be patient if you want to play more aggressively just play bullet but you're not going to learn anything so all right yeah this move makes sense you want to develop the knight on e2 for example or maybe the queen and castle long after queen e7 though i wouldn't really suggest to castle long because as you see i prepared this as i said to put pressure on the king but there is also pressure on the a pawn so this move has two purposes three purposes because i'm also connecting the rooks I play this in order to castle long, but at this point, I, I mean, you really need to develop pieces. You see, I'm going to win because it's not developing pieces. And at this level, it's hard to see someone that really develop all the pieces before attacking. Yeah, castle long uh, is a mistake, obviously. So why, why I have less than an 80% accuracy is the middle game end. I played almost perfectly, but okay. Um, yeah, at this point, I feel like that uh, C4 is quite a good move, so maybe this was the, the mistake I made. C4 is a really good move. Also, the come C8 makes sense, although after that it can move, so... Yeah, maybe the C8 is just a waste of time. Just play C4 because you attack this pawn and it's really important because there is the king. Yeah, this wasn't a great move, I have to say. But now C4 obviously has to be played. Yeah. And now I'm trading because the king has to step up a square. And after that, I'm going to put the queen on before and... Um, I'll get these weaknesses. And this is a mistake, he says. Although he's still minus two. He was saying to take on c4, but after I take, 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 queen take, so what? Okay, let's see. I take, knight take, bishop take, I guess, what is the point? Queen takes? I mean, there is a lot of stuff going on. Knight b4. Yeah, night before then, yeah, pressure on, on the pawn. Yeah, that's the that's the that's the. Although I took a um, much slower approach, which is not good. I mean, it's not good. But uh, yeah, I, I also make mistakes, as you see. But still, it's not a losing move. Uh, it's a move that makes sense. I'm provoking this, which is a weakness. A weakness. Uh, yeah, I'm giving a pawn. This is really instructive. I'm giving a pawn in order to start a really good attack. Technically, I'm not even giving the pawn because I saw that after that I'm taking this and I'm winning. So you shouldn't really take this pawn. But yeah, this makes sense. You shouldn't be scared of, of moving a piece because is defend uh, something like, uh, like a pawn, for example, but even if mm, that was a piece. If you move a piece and you are going to have a really good attack, you can lose material, don't worry, that makes a lot of sense. I lose this pawn, but after this move, what? Take this way, yeah, you are mad, you can play that, but you can take with the pawn, probably the best move is to push. And after that you play knight c6 for example, but I'm going to make progress. Although, yeah, the best move is taking with the knight, because um, I think after you take, take, you just take with the pawn, the knight is pinned, the king is wide open and you're going to destroy him. Although, I, thought, I, I, I didn't see this move, but I thought that taking with the pawn was quite a good move. It's not bad, but uh, yes, before. After that, although I'm completely winning. Yeah, obviously you take this way, and this is another risk that in moment. If you have a huge attacker going on, you can actually take with the rook and suck in the knight because it's not really sucking a piece. Uh, I'm, I'm going to meet you. So I take with the rook, which is the second best move, is inaccurate. Taking with the queen would have been better because I had the mate. Um, probably this way. This makes sense. 
Although even taking with the rook is completely winning. After that I take with the rook and obviously this is important before trading every piece you have. If you have a better move, play that move. In fact this is the best move. Why? Because after he take it's going to be destroyed. And if he does not take I'm going to win in a second. He resigned because let's say this is the, the only move he has. Um, I can give me him a check on b2. For example, I can play rook on c2, for example, and win the queen. I have a lot of good moves, so this was hopeless. So, what I suggest in this game is, in order to get better, if you are, uh, my, uh, I don't know, an, an intermediate player, is to develop all your pieces, like all your pieces, before doing something else. Or develop a part of the pieces, in order to castle as soon as possible. In this game there were some problems for my opponent. He didn't castle really soon, he castled late and as, as you saw I already had a huge attack going on because I developed all the pieces I had. So he should have castled way before and developed the knight on f1 much earlier because Mm, he could have played, um, sorry, on, on g1, he, he could have played knight on uh, f3 or knight on, on e2 early on and then castle short and I mean... F I almost destroyed everything. And I mean, at that point... Okay, and... Okay, and at that point, I mean... You are, you are in a good shape, I mean, you are not going to get destroyed, so the opening was dubious, I have to say. If your castle, though, is not lost, you are giving me a huge attack, which I, I don't really understand why you are white, you should attack, but it's playable if you castle. If you castle too late, though, you are going to be destroyed. In fact, at a certain point, it was like minus 3, then it, it became minus 5. So that's the point. Also, at this level, sometimes you don't take the opening seriously. And we're taking the opening seriously. I'm not saying to play theory. I'm saying to play logical moves and to think about the moves you play. Because if you play the opening and you still have nine minutes in a rapid game and you don't know theory because obviously you... You play that thing which you oh, Fianchetto's bishop is not theory. It's, is you improvising at least think well about your move because if you're going to get destroyed in the middle game is because you messed up in the opening so that's my suggestion for today i hope you learned something and see you in the next video